couple of days ago, I made a video where I turned this coding array board into a streaming deck. And I said in the video that it was just a simple Arduino with a bunch of sensors connected to it, and that's exactly what it was. Uh, but if you want to make something like this, you're probably not going to have a coding array board, and so I thought I would do a simpler explanation of how it worked. Now, in that video, I would breathe on this sensor, and when it got above 80% humidity, it would fire off the politics subreddit. Uh, when I flashed a lighter over this flame sensor, it would take you to subscribe to my channel. If you fidgeted with this, it would um, take you to Amazon. And so all kinds of really weird things. And, and that was fun. Like I really enjoyed making that video. But for a building project, it probably wasn't the best way to explain how to make this work. So uh, what I decided to do was to simplify it. And I made the most basic Arduino setup that I could for three buttons. I took three buttons and connected them to pins five, six, and seven, took the other side of the buttons and connected them to ground and wrote a simple sketch. And so we're going to use this as the basis to learn how to do what I did so that you can take it and you can expand it into whatever you want it to be. Before we get started, I want to talk about Adam Welch's project, which is way more technically complicated than my project. Uh, his uses these little OLED screens and they are they act as push buttons and it's an amazing project. Like from a technical perspective, way better than what I built. But I do want to point out some differences because they're not the same and they approach this completely differently. Uh, the way his project works is it emulates basically a keyboard and when you push a button, whatever active window you are uh, in on your computer, that macro is going to happen in that window. So if you're in Microsoft Word and you push one for Photoshop, then that is going to try to run that macro in Word, even though you really wanted to run it in Photoshop. So um, we attack that two different ways. He's emulating a keyboard and I'm using Node Red on the PC as a service. And the advantage for my way of doing it is that these codes and things that you run uh, are completely independent of whatever the active program is on your screen. It doesn't care where your mouse is. It doesn't care where your uh, keyboard is is localized. It just it's going to do it behind the scenes. Now there's pros and cons to each method, but I just wanted you to understand that it's a pretty big difference. Um, my code is also super simple and it may not have looked like that it, when you first looked at my project, but we're going to show you how simple this is. Um, the second thing is this is just way cheaper. You can run it on any Arduino uh, with any types of inputs or outputs you want to use. So we're going to get into that. Um, I am not knocking his project. His Again, his project is way cooler than what I built, but they just have different uses. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the Arduino code. So this project really could not be simpler. Uh, I've got a basic Arduino sketch, and all you need to do is pick any Arduino that can put serial out through the USB port. And in my situation, I've hooked up three buttons to it. You can hook whatever you want to it, as I showed you in the other video. Uh, I've got three buttons that have blue, white, and yellow caps on them. And uh, I have them connected to pins five, six, and seven, respectively. And the other side of the button is connected to the Arduino ground. Um, I started up serial at 9600 BPS. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you know what it is. I've set all three of those pins to inputs with the pull-up resistors activated and uh, just print out a little serial message saying that the Arduino is booted. Now, um, this next part you can do however you want. You could do different kinds of loops and different kinds of syntaxes, but all I do um, just for because I feel like it is when one of these buttons is pushed, I'm putting the button color equals true. And you don't even really need the equals true part. I just do it just because I wanted to. So that's it. The sketch really could not be any simpler. The part that I think scares people most about this project is the Node Red. I don't know what it is, but there's something about this software that everybody kind of cringes that it's going to be super complicated, but it is so easy. Um, you have to install it in two parts. I know I'm already making it complicated, but you, uh, I would recommend most people on Windows are going to want the 64-bit MSI. You download Node.js and install it just like you would any other Windows program. And then open up a command prompt and you are going to take this little thing. If you just Google uh, install Node Red Windows, there's this one little line here. You're going to copy it 
and you're going to paste it into your command prompt and hit enter and that is it you have installed node red it was not that scary so what's going to happen is you will run node red by simply typing node red from the command prompt the best thing to do is to make sure that you open up a new command prompt window after you install it to make sure that all your environmental variables and all that kind of stuff are started. But uh, basically, you type in node hyphen red and you will get this little um, screen here. And it's going to tell you that you have a server running at this address. All you have to do is type that 127.001.1880 into your web browser and hit enter and uh, it's going to reload. Now I have all of my old things here, but you will just have something that looks like this. You'll have a blank screen and uh, you can drag things in and connect them together and all that kind of stuff. Uh, super simple, but what we're gonna do is we are going to do one little thing. And one of the things that makes Node-RED magical is the fact that there are so many different things that you can add over here and it's all found under something called the palette manager and so what we're going to do is we're going to search for one called serial uh and node red ser uh, node red node serial port is what it's called and you would just click the install button you can tell that i've already done that and uh that will install this thing over here and uh, let's see here let's find it if you drag it down serial in so we have this serial in and we're just going to drag it in now i know from when i installed my from when i uploaded my code that i was on com port 28 so we're going to make sure that we have the arduino ide closed that all the serial monitors are closed and we're going to double click this and you're going to see that i don't have uh com 28 in here so we're going to click add new serial port and click the little pencil and then we're going to tell it to search and voila there's com 28 we want to set it to the same baud rate that we did for um when we uploaded the code which is 9600 and that's it and now what's going to happen you'll notice that the little line went away and we've got this little red triangle here now it's a blue dot blue dot is good and we are going to get this debug thing and basically what this is is this is going to act a lot like your arduino serial monitor so i've connected these two things together and i'm going to hit deploy and i'm going to hit this little bug over here to debug and we have our arduino has booted message just as we would have seen in the serial monitor except now when i push the blue button and you'll see there's no debouncing here i'm just getting tons of blue equals true white equals true yellow equals true uh so all of a sudden we're able to read what the serial monitor is doing now i could have put some code in the arduino to debounce that to make sure that it could only do this every so often but we're going to take care of that node red because you're going to learn some new things today so we're going to hit the little trash can to get rid of that and we are going to start figuring out how in the world are we going to parse this message system that we've made so one of the things to notice is that every single one of these messages comes in as its own little unique entity they're each uh they're each little individual messages and so what we're going to do is we want to find out are we getting yellow equals true are we getting white equals true are we getting blue equals true now the way to do that we could write code um but we're going to do that a little bit easier we're going to come in here and grab this little thing called a switch node and what we're going to do is connect this together and double click it and there's a couple different ways we could do it we could actually look for the blue equals true but we're gonna make our lives a little easier and we're just gonna put contains blue equals true okay so now we're gonna hit done and we're gonna drag this back over here and what this is gonna do is all these messages that are coming in the only ones that are gonna come through are the ones that say blue equals true so when I deploy this I clean this out I'm gonna hit the yellow button nothing's happening i'm going to hit the white button nothing's happening i'm going to hit the blue button and all of a sudden blue equals true is coming in so we've immediately began to filter our messages now we're going to do one more thing and we want to make sure that we're not getting just crap tons of blue equals true messages so we're going to add another node down here and it is called a throttle node and so we're going to find that over here somewhere 
uh, let's see, it's going to be up somewhere. I never know what order these things are in. Throttle, there we go. So assume that you're launching your calculator or Photoshop or whatever. You could say that it would be pretty unreasonable to have that program load more than once a minute or something like that. So you can come in here and simply change this to one minute and then we're just gonna call this, uh, it already says throttle, so that's fine. We're gonna throttle it by time. And uh, so now what you'll see is I'm gonna clear this. Uh, let's, I'll tell you what, let's drop this down to, to five seconds just to, uh, to be able to demonstrate on the screen. But we're gonna clear all these messages. You're gonna see that I can press yellow, nothing happens. White, nothing happens. I press blue, but if I keep pressing blue, it's only going to allow a blue to be pressed every five seconds. And so that is pretty sweet because we've taken care of all of our debouncing. We have a ridiculous rainstorm going on outside right now. So um, anyway, at this point, you can do anything that Node Red can do. So you could come into this palette manager and uh, you could find nodes that would do uh, Twitter. You could find nodes for email. Um, you can do all kinds of different things with it. You could even come in. I've got one here from another project that uh, speaks. So I could come in here and drag this on this side and deploy that. And now when I hit the blue button, blue equals true. And so it's going to say whatever message got passed through there. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to look at the things that are more um, in the Stream Deck territory. And the first one involves loading a basic program that's already in your path. So I'm going to drag this in here and we are going to double click it. And all I'm going to do is type in calc.exe. And uh, yeah, so that's really all that needs to happen. We could set a timeout or something like that, but we're just going to load calc.exe. And now I've got six monitors, seven monitors going on here. So I don't know that it'll load on the primary screen, but when I click it, uh, yep, it drug it over here to the side and there's calc.exe. Um, so that's the most basic thing I was doing in there. Now there's a couple of other techniques I was using. So let's play with those. Um, let's go ahead and copy these two here and paste them down. And then we're going to come into the switch node and we are going to add another check where you would say if, uh, let's say white equals true. And then while we're here, we'll go ahead and yell add uh, yellow equals true. Again, the true doesn't matter. I'm just doing it for the heck of it. And let's go ahead and paste one more of these in since we've got three. And we're going to drag this to this one and this to this one. Now, these little dots here that got added on correspond with these. So, And we're going to change this to contains. Uh, so contains. The reason for that is this little enter symbols in here and sometimes that can get in the way. So it's just way easier to pick up any part of the string as opposed to trying to worry about if the enter symbols in there or not. Uh, so anyway, we've got whatever, if it contains blue equals true, it's going to go to the top flow. White equals true goes to the middle flow. Yellow equals true goes to the bottom flow. And so um, let's take a look at a couple of other techniques. The first one is loading up the web browser and so if you come back here to my example sketch uh, I've got this right here so we'll copy this and I'll show it to you in a little bit more detail here so um, this button I am loading something it just this is just a long path but essentially what I'm loading is subscribe.cmd and that's just a little bit of Windows script that I'll show you so if I bring over my command prompt I load up Adam um, we're gonna get my code editor, and I can see in here that under the stream array, I have these scripts, and I have subscribe.cmd. And all that's doing is typing start Chrome with this information after. I've just found that it's a little bit easier and a little bit more reliable to run this stuff in a script. And so uh, that script is super simple. Just start Chrome and then wherever you wanna start. Uh, so that would happen with the yellow button now. And then let me show you, let's see what other one. Now you could rename this. So I could uh, put subscribe. <laughs> I can't type today. Sub to another maker. There we go. Um, so we sub to another maker. You can change that name there. Then the last one was that Visual Basic script. 
And so if we look in the same code editor, you'll see that I have some other scripts in there. And this one, uh, let's see, we've got dangerous.vbs. And this is just Visual Basic script that you could find uh, like any kind of script kitty on the internet itself. So that would be dangerous.vbs. And the way that those load up is if you come here to dangerous vb script, you'll see I'm putting w script in front of the uh, in front of the path to the script itself. So uh, we'll just copy that for simplicity and paste it in here. And then we're gonna put uh, dangerous, dangerous VB script, there we go. So now what's gonna happen when we deploy this, uh, the blue button will load up calculator and that will come somewhere, that comes up here on my left monitor. Uh, you can push this subscribe to another maker, the second button and that brings up the web browser with this subscription message and last but not least if you click the yellow button you get this little thing over here that says uh you know what do you want to say to me now one of the things that's interesting is it gives you this pid this process id here and that allows you if you ever write one of those scripts that crashes your computer or something like that you can kill that script off because you know the process id of it so um at its very core, that's all this thing does. Now, there's you can play around with Node Red and see all kinds of different things, but whatever is in this command, you're executing as if you were in the command prompt of your computer. So, like if I were to come in here and type in Adam dot, like I just did down here, it would load up as if I had typed it in the command prompt. So, that's how it works. It's not complicated, and if you get into this palette manager over here, you can find all sorts of different integrations, all sorts of different things you can do. So, at its simplest form, that's how to build a little streaming deck thing for the cost of an Arduino and a couple of buttons. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.